Hi, I'm Lauren with iHeartSpeech.com, where you can get ideas and activities that you can do to build your child's communication skills. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make games work for whatever skill you want to work on with your child. Okay, so I'm thinking about a couple of different kiddos that I'm going to be seeing tomorrow, and I'm planning ahead what I'm going to be working on. The first thing I did was I picked my game. This week we're going to be playing the um, Meet the Woodland Animals game, which is available to, for you to um, print and play. Um, but I know that it's a dice game, so I have two different um, printables. The first one is a six number uh, practice skill page, and another is a 10. I won't need the 10 right now, so I'm going to put that off to the side. So I have my six page, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about who the kiddo is and what sounds I need to work on. So that's it. Here I go. Okay, well that didn't take very long. So what I have here is I have my kiddos and what I'll do is as I'm working with them, I'll cut it out and I will attach it to the game and send it home so the parent knows, okay, if you roll a one, and this is Jenny, uh, Jenny needs to say the word can. If we roll a two, Jenny needs to say the word key. Um, and the parents kind of know how this goes, so they know, they understand the concept, but you might have to explain it the very first time. But, and the child will have played, and so they will know what they need to work on. Now, because I don't just do this with therapy kiddos, I actually do it with my own kiddos. Let's change from work to homeschool. All right, so I have a new one. And if I wanted to work on my Latin verbs. We are on lesson. Oh no, we're not doing, we're doing Latin nouns. So I'm going to say Latin. And I'm just gonna go through the words that I think we need to work on. Or um, I'll show you how we can make it work if we are mastering goals and needing to move to the next one. So. I'm just gonna go with the first, whoops, that was a, here we go, over here, Latin. Okay, so. Okay, so I have the Latin nouns that I wanna work on. And now let's say clearly, I tell ya is pretty easy. We don't need to work on that one. So I say, oh, okay, after the first round, you got that. I'm gonna cross it off and I'm gonna add the next one. And so then I can just change my list as I go. And I know that poeta is another easy one. So let's go ahead and say we mastered that one. And now we'll add in queen. So that is how I would modify it as I was going if the kiddo was really getting it and I wanted to work on another one, um, that's how I would do that. Now, we also are working on chemistry and physics. So let me get our chemistry and physics chapter vocabulary. So, for Latin when we play, we'll work on this. And this could be one game, and this could be a different game. Or you can play the same game twice, and the first time you play, you work on this. And the second time you play, you work on this. So we're gonna work on mechanics, the first, second, and third law of motion, force, acceleration, inertia, and then who is Sir Isaac Newton. So these are the things that as we're playing, we would work on as we play. So. 
that is how that goes. So the other thing I can do is I can take score and keep data on how the kiddos are doing. So let's say I have Jenny. And I have Jenny who's working on the k at the beginning. And we're playing our game and we roll a one and she gets can right. I'm gonna put a plus right next to it. And then we work on key and she doesn't get that one right. I put a minus next to it. We roll the dice, she gets a one again and this time she didn't get it right. So then I would just keep my score as I'm going. And so in the end, it could look like this. And chances are you're going to have some numbers that get practiced more often. I don't know if it's the way the dice rolls. I know it's supposed to be probability. You should be able to get any of the numbers, but I'll tell you in our games where the numbers win, like in the which score will get the acorn, get that acorn, or a couple of the others where um, I call them my um, chasing games, where like you roll a one and you move the first one one space. You roll a two, you move the second one. Numbers two, three, and four, win almost every time. One and six rarely win. Um, I don't know why that is. So anyway, so you'll have some that are longer than others. So in this game, we would have rolled car more times than can. And so that's just kind of the way games typically work. But then I can easily count and do my data on how well did this child do on their sounds. Or I can see, wow, these last two numbers, they didn't do really well on those. And then I can analyze why didn't they do those well. And in this one, I would assume that it's because of the k and the t, cat, kite. So then I know next time I really need to focus on, you know, working on the k at the back and the t at the front. That's a speechy thing. But for when you're practicing, it's just good to kind of have an idea of how they're doing. Okay. So they got 10 out of 22. And so then you can send that home so the parents can see, hey, they got 10 out of 22 of these words. Keep working on these until they do, you know, 19 out of 22, right? Let that be their goal. Practice these, keep playing the game because your goal is gonna be you're gonna get 19 or 20 out of the 22, or whatever, so they have a percentage. <clears throat> so, okay, so that is how I use my little practice skills page um, in therapy and at home to work on all kinds of skills. We've done math, we've done speech, we've done language, we've done Latin, we've done science, we've done everything, anything, pretty much where you have a skill that you need to drill, instead of drilling with boring, boring cards, make it fun so that as you're playing, you're practicing your skills. Okay, that's it. Have fun, happy playing.